Good morning. Uh, gentlemen, if you take your hats off, I'd appreciate that in God's house. Thank you. We begin this morning in the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If you want to know somebody better than you already do, what would you do? I don't doubt that quite a few of you at some point in your educational career were asked to do an interview of somebody, and many of you chose a grandma or a grandpa, and interviewed them about what life was like back in whatever day. That's a good way to get to know somebody. Daniel Day-Lewis wanted to get to know people better than what he did for movies that he was asked to act in. And to do that, for most of the characters, he could not interview them because either it was somebody that was not real, a fictional character, or it was a historical character who was long dead. In the movie My Left Foot, for which he won an Oscar, He played a man who only had the use of his left foot. He had cerebral palsy, cerebral palsy. And he learned to put a record on a record player using his left foot. He spent eight weeks at a clinic with cerebral palsy patients so he could learn what it was like to be one of them. And he stayed in that wheelchair for the entire shoot of the movie including forcing people to carry his wheelchair over the wires and cords on the set, to take him into restaurants, and because all he had use of was his left foot as that character, he had somebody feed him just so he could know what it was like to be that person. Another movie was Last of the Mohicans. He made his own canoe because that's what they would have done back in those days. He lived in character in a village with no electricity and no running water for the entire shoot of that movie. And he carried that 12-pound gun wherever he went, always in character. But perhaps his best-known role is as Abraham Lincoln. And for that movie, he read every book that he could find on Lincoln, every good biography on Lincoln. He studied hours and hours of pictures of Lincoln, so he knew how to pose, how Lincoln would carry himself. He read about Lincoln's tone of voice, and we have no recordings, but he decided that he would use a high-pitched voice because that's what some said Lincoln had. And for three months, he made himself be Abraham Lincoln. When he would text his co-star, Mary, text his co-star, who now I've forgotten who it was, but played his wife Mary, he texted as Abraham Lincoln. He would sign it Abraham Lincoln, Sally Field, and she would respond in kind. So, so what is the point? He won an Oscar for that role. And when people saw him on the set or off the set, they saw Abraham Lincoln. Our text this morning is from Ephesians chapter 5. It's a verse out of your Bible reading from yesterday. Be imitators of God as dearly loved children. Would you like to know God better than what you do? You can't interview God. But what can you do? You would like to know God better than you do, because if you would, God has so many promises of what happens when we are in a closer relationship with him. So how do you do that? You study the Bible. And when you look at the story of creation and you realize what God did, not just for Adam and Eve, but for you, you better understand God. You look at Genesis chapter 3 and the fall into sin and realize that when Adam and Eve hid from God, God didn't let them keep on hiding, but he went and found them. And then God didn't destroy them, but made that first promise of the Savior. How God used a catastrophic flood to wipe out the whole world except for eight believers. And then you remember, God did that for you. Abraham, and how he promised Abraham a son, and Abraham believed and Abraham doubted, and Abraham believed and Abraham doubted. But God led him through those doubts, that roller coaster of faith, 
until his faith was strong enough to take that son up a mountain and be ready to sacrifice that son. And then God steps in and says, No, Abraham, you do not have to sacrifice your son. You get to know God better. Jacob and Esau, for all of us that have had sibling rivalries and sibling fights and tension within our families, and how God helped Jacob through that time of his life. And then you lay your head not on a rock but on a pillow at night, and remember how, how Jacob wrestled with God? And when you study that, you, you have your own wrestling match with God, knowing that God is always there for you. And you, like Jacob, can demand of God that God will keep his promises. The whole story and life of Moses. You want to know God better? Study Moses, who made career changes at the age of 40 and the age of 80. Moses, who led people who didn't appreciate him out of slavery across the Red Sea and through 40 years of of wandering. And then you get to the New Testament and, and Jesus' birth. Do I want to get to know God better? Recognize what God did by sending his son as a baby to Bethlehem. The flight to Egypt to protect the life of that son for you and me. Jesus' temptation and everything that teaches us not just about Jesus and about God, but about how Satan attacks us. And then all of Jesus' miracles, which we wouldn't have time to cover. But in any of those, all of those miracles, Jesus always is stepping in to do something for someone else, but then also for you and me 2,000 years later. All of the parables of Jesus that always have a point, not just for the people that listened to him 2,000 years ago, but for you and me. And then, Holy Week. If you want to get to know God better, follow God's Son into and through Jerusalem and to an upper room and out to Gethsemane and into a courtyard and into a palace and then out to Calvary. And then we begin to know God better. Be imitators of God I can't live in character of God for three months like Daniel Day-Lewis did with the character of Lincoln because I can't and you can't be God. And yet, Paul says, be imitators of God. Imitate him and to do that, know him. Today I would tell you, every one of you, who's a child of God, that you do just that. You are imitators of God because so often you are like Jesus. So be Jesus to those around you. Be imitators of God as dearly loved children. In your Bible reading yesterday, be kind and compassionate. Don't hang on to bitterness and rage and malice. And when I did a Bible study on that Bible reading, I felt guilt because that's not me. And yet, because I'm a child of God, because you're a child of God, that is you. And so often you are in character as Jesus. When you are there for a friend who is struggling, and you offer him a shoulder to literally or figuratively cry on, when you point somebody to God's promises, you are Jesus when you don't hold a grudge, And without even saying, I forgive you, because that can be awkward, by your very actions, you let them know, yes, yes, they are forgiven. When you have been wronged by somebody and suffered such emotional pain, and yet you let go of that and don't harbor a grudge and don't hang on to that bitterness that our sinful nature so wants to cling to, then you are Jesus to those around you. Juniors and seniors, you are Jesus to underclassmen when you can tell the terror in their eyes because of their social awkwardness or because of their loneliness or because they're struggling with friendships. And all you do is is smile. All you do is say hi. All you do with an underclassman on your team is reach out to them. You are Jesus. The best way to know God better is through his word. Here in chapel, 
in your religion classes than by studying and, and reading God's Word. I'm in my 35th year of ministry. I do not know God as I would like to know Him. I'm not talking about I'd like to know why God did this or this or this and that's part of God's hidden will. I'm talking about what God does share with me here. I taught Life of Christ for 10 years, yet there's so much about Jesus in those four Gospels that I've forgotten or do not know. Faculty and students, but especially faculty, challenge yourself to get to know Jesus better by reading those Gospels. Sophomores who are blessed to study Life of Christ in class Soak up everything you can learn about Jesus. Seniors, as you look ahead and stress about life after high school, you want to take Jesus with you. To take Jesus with you, know the Jesus that you find here. Because then, you can be an imitator of God. Then you can be Jesus to those around you. And then you will have a stronger connection with that Savior who desperately, desperately wants to cradle you in his arms through everything you face. Our comfort, of course, is is this. Daniel Day-Lewis has won three Oscars for his acting and has been nominated three more times. He could play that character next to flawlessly. Me, be like Jesus, anything but flawless. But I have a flawless Savior who forgives me for all of my sinful flaws and says, come to me, run to me, know me better, and I will give you rest. What a blessing. Continue to know your Savior. Amen. We'll continue with our prayer. Our prayer will be two verses of, Oh, that the Lord would guide my ways. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Good morning, everybody. We're going to be talking to you today about the 